In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the use of tracking points in Twixter to help guide the motion estimation for the retiming of your clip. You should be familiar with the settings of the regular version of Twixter before watching this tutorial because I won't be covering the basic Twixter concepts here. You can refer to the regular Twixter tutorials for more information on the basics. Let's start with the question, when do you use tracking points in Twixter? Well, if you see some ghosting or warping like this when you retime your shot with Twixter, it might be a good candidate to use tracking points. You can find tracking points in Twixter Pro for After Effects, as I'm using here, but the technique would be similar in Twixter Pro for Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and Twixter for Fusion, Nuke, and other OFX hosts such as Scratch and Composite. I will refer to it as Twixter Pro in this tutorial to differentiate it from using Twixter without tracking points. Tracking points are not available on Fusion because ION has spline support for Twixter and you use this method to make single points. We will see how to do this in the splines tutorial. You can use up to 12 tracking points that can be specified to help guide Twixter's motion estimation. By using the tracking points you can explicitly tell Twixter where a pixel moves from one frame to the next in order to guide Twixter's calculation of motion vectors. You can set the position of each point at each frame by hand or use tracking data from the host application's point tracking features or tracking data from an alternate source. Note, any of these points can be reused if you have animated the Use Don't Use menu to Don't Use or you have moved the point off screen for the applications that don't support animating menus. In this first example, let's look at this shot we've retimed to 20% without using points. You can see the ghosting and warping that occurs. Now let's take a look at how we can improve the result of this shot using tracking points. I've copied the original Twixter shot that I just showed you so we have already added Twixter and set the speed to 20 percent. I'm going to put the display on source to set points. Now I will go to the track points. I will start on the first frame with point 1 and select main BG layer and position the point in one of the areas that was ghosting or warping. Now I can go to point 2 and, may, and select main BG layer and position this point. I can continue adding and placing points on the first frame to add as many as I may need, up to 12 points. Now I can select the stopwatch to animate the keyframes for all of the points. and go to the next frame and reposition all the points, making keyframes for each frame. Another option would be to use After Effects Tracker and then copy the keyframed point tracking data into the point parameters of Twixter Pro. Now we can go back to the other points and hand place them so you can see how I'm doing it. Once a point goes off screen, we can select Don't Use and make sure the stopwatch is selected so it makes a keyframe. For applications like Final Cut Pro 6 and 7 and Nuke that don't support animated menus, pay attention. The way you do this in the applications that don't support animated menus goes like this. If the image that your point is tracking goes off screen, you can manually move the point to your best guess of where the point should be, even though it's off screen. Twixter will use this data in its calculations, so be careful not to just randomly place it anywhere or you'll get some strange results. You only have to do this for the first frame that it's off screen. Twixter will then know to treat it as though it has been marked don't use. This is the same if you are moving a point on screen from an off screen position. The frame before it will appear on screen, you will move the point to where you guess it might be. 
This tells Twixter to use this point for tracking purposes. You will follow the same technique in any application that doesn't support animated menus. Once a keyframe is off screen or not being used for two consecutive frames, you can recycle it and use it again. Okay, so moving on. Now that we have all of the keyframes we need, we can switch the display back to output. Don't forget to do this and render to see our result. You can see that we have a much better result using tracking points to help with the motion estimation than we had without the use of points.